Okay. Can everybody see this okay? Do we do we want lights, more lights off? Maybe like the first round. Yeah. Cool. Is that better? Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so like Dr. Ben Block was said, I'm gonna be talking about the Spice Toolkit. And it's basically um, it's developed by NASA. It gives you a lot of information regarding the planetary constants, the ephemerides, um, a lot of information on various spacecraft that they track. Um, and I'll go into more detail in a second. But first, we're going to talk about kind of the basics of orbit modeling, because this is basically going to assist you in making your own kind of simulations on MATLAB or mostly MATLAB we're going to be talking about today. So, so first of all, when we start talking about creating our own simulations, we want to have a good understanding of the dynamics that are involved with our simulations. So um, if you have a mission in mind, you want to keep a couple of things uh, in mind when you start programming and throughout the entire simulation, you want to kind of know the behavior of your satellite. So it's good to understand, you know, the orbital period of your satellite, the basics like the orbital elements, uh, some major axis, eccentricity, inclination, just to kind of have a qualitative understanding of the shape of your orbit. So when you get results, you can kind of have an intuitive understanding of what you should expect. Um, so it's good, good to know that beforehand and throughout. Um, otherwise, maybe you get some data at the end. You trust it because it came from a computer. But if you're getting parabolic trajectories with an eccentricity, when you should have an eccentricity of zero, like that should be a red flag. Um, so just kind of have an understanding, a working understanding of astrodynamics. Um, and you want to understand basically the forces that you're going to be modeling. And we'll go into that in the next slide. But you want to start thinking about what kind of perturbations you want to include in your, in your simulation. So if you're doing in this class, we do mostly just two body stuff. So just the Earth and the satellite. Um, but in reality, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot more going on. You have things like the Earth's ablateness, uh, how it bulges and how it's not a uniform bulge um, and ways, ways that we model that. Um, you have things like atmospheric drag for your low, ah, lower Earth orbits, um, solar radiation pressure if you're higher up, like in the, the geo belt particular, and some MEO applications, that's middle Earth orbit. Um, and then third bodies, of course, like the sun and the moon. Um, so right now, in this class, uh, I think we had one homework assignment where you all basically had to make this plot, essentially. So this should look familiar to everybody. Um, and so with that, it was just two body, I believe. Um, right now, you guys have the capability to start playing around with maybe adding some non-spherical elements to your model. So maybe J2. I think you all can look up a formula right now and get that wor working. Um, maybe you want to start playing with atmospheric drag. Uh, you guys can do that as well. You get a, a density model, so that might be kind of complicated, but you can use a pretty basic model and get that rolling right now. But maybe you're interested in adding solar radiation pressure or gravity from uh, the sun or the moon. Um, right now, you are unable to do that um, with just, just equations. You're going to need some information about where these bodies are in relation to the planet, in relation to your satellite. Um, and that's why we start using tools like the, uh, the SPICE toolkit. Because um, you're going to need things like the ephemerides, which basically are uh, position information on this for the uh, celestial bodies. And you'll need that for the solar radiation pressure because you need to know where the sun is with respect to your satellite at all times if you want to try to model the incoming photons. Um, and then third body effects, you want to know where the, the sun or the moon is pulling you. You know, it's not always going to be radially out, so you have to kind of model that intelligently. So ways to do that are, um, you can use the SPICE toolkit. So this is developed by the Navigation and Ancillary Information Facility at JPL. Um, it sounds fancy, but it's actually, it's probably three or four guys working on this. Um, and they basically make a database with information regarding planetary orbits and how and where they would be with respect to certain time standards. And we're going to be talking about 
um, UTC time. We'll talk about that later. Um, and they give you a lot of uh, position orientation information on some of the satellites that are out there. Um, so basically with the SPICE toolkit, what it stands for is spacecraft, planet, instrument, camera matrix, and events. Um, and so you have a breakdown of what each one of these letters stands for. So that's going to be for space vehicle, target body trajectory. So that's basically position, like the basics, position of the sun, position of the, uh, the moon or Mars moons, if you're talking about Mars, and where they are with respect to a given reference frame or a given reference body. Um, SPICE allows you to kind of dictate where your user is and what your user is tracking. So you can get position elements for anybody with respect to anybody. Um, it's pretty powerful. Uh, the P is going to be basically information on uh, the gravitational parameters, the radius of any one of these bodies. Um, frame information. So if we're talking about the what what they use is the J2000 frame is the standard Earth-based inertial frame. Um, and that's the same ECI frame that we talk about here in class. Um, that information is stored in, in the P section. Um, I, C, and E, I'm not really going to talk about too much because it's, it's not really necessary for our applications. That's more in terms with uh, spacecraft specific items like instrument field of view size. Um, we're not too much concerned with that. Uh, orientation information and events is no one really uses events. They might remove that. Uh, that's basically kind of just selective information about satellite orbits and missions that they have. So another cool thing about this, this toolkit that I'm going to start talking about here is you can use it with a lot of other uh, programs like STK, for instance, which we promote heavily in this class. You can use the files from the CSPICE database, and you can get ephemeris files to use in the, what they call a, I think it's called a, a SPICE propagator in SDK. So if you go in the help menu and type in SPICE, uh, a couple of these items will show up. And so basically you can use SDK to pull from JPL's database of uh, planetary ephemeris or ephemerides um, and other constants like uh, the central bodies. Uh, option here for SDK. You can get constants regarding uh, gravitational parameters that NASA has developed versus what SDK decides they should use. They should roughly be the same, but if, if you really need to use JPL's information for some reason, you have that information here. Um, and you can also get state information from these files. So, information about asteroids as well? Asteroids, yeah. So, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later on, but so not just planets, but asteroids, um, they track. So if it's like Halley's Comet, for instance, is another body that you could, I would be surprised if it wasn't on there. Um, they track a lot of asteroids. Um, some stars to some degree, I, I don't think we're going to get too much into that today, but yeah, it's, it's not just uh, planets and moons. It's any kind of relevant body that you might find literature on, there's a good chance that you'll find information here in this toolkit. Um, so yeah, so this is one thing you can use with STK. You can pull this information in STK, uh, but we're going to pull it into MATLAB. Um, and this is, this is going to be pretty powerful. So originally the SPICE toolkit was, it's written in C and it's called C SPICE. Um, and they made a wrapper for, for MATLAB called MICE, and here's kind of where that acronym comes from. And it's, it's got the same kind of functionality as CSPICE, so you can still pull uh, constants and position elements for, for any kind of body of interest. Um, you can do it through MATLAB, which is more user-friendly for, for us, unless you program in C. If you program in C, I would probably recommend just going straight to the CSPICE. Um, but if you don't program C, no problem, use MATLAB. Um, and basically, they have the same kind of, they call them APIs, I think it's application programmable interface, basically just little programs that run uh, 
that you can run to get this information. And so they'll all have the same kind of prefix of C spice or mice, and then each start element will kind of be the, the specific C spice function that you're calling. And for instance, we have C spice lat rec, which gives you the latitude and longitude coordinates. Oh, I'm sorry. It gives you the Cartesian coordinates um, if you input the latitude and longitude of a satellite. Um, and they have, you know, the opposite. I'm, I'm sure it's probably called rec lat. That gives you the latitude and longitude if you give it x, y, z. Um, and this, this, this function here, C spice SPK position is what that stands for. Um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. That's, that's something of interest. So that's going to give us the position for a body that we're interested in. Um, okay. So I'm going to talk about installing, installing mice, and it's, it's, it's a little bit involved. It's, it's, a, um, it's all public information. They have lots of documentation on NASA's website, um, but it's, it's not the most user-friendly. So I'm going to try to demystify some of the steps here. And if, if you wanted to use this on your own, these are kind of uh, guidelines you could follow to speed up the process. Um, so you're going to want to go to the website. It's this nice... NAIF website. Uh, it's got a lot of information on the toolkit, a lot of documentation you can use. Um, but you, you go to this website, you find the, the package you want to install. We're looking at MATLAB, so you're going to find their MATLAB link, and it's going to give you a, a zip file um, that you're going to want to extract. And I recommend putting it in your MATLAB folder just because it's a MATLAB interface or a MATLAB program that you're going to be using. Um, you extract it there, it's a lot of files, um, but you won't be using a lot of them. And then there's this, this make all dot bat file you're going to have to run to kind of teach your machine how to read these C spice functions. Um, but I'm going to go over that in just a moment. So, so after, you, after you download and extract these files, um, you're going to want to start using this toolkit. Uh, and mostly what's powerful about these toolkits is the information stored in the, the kernels. Um, so we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the kernels and how they're involved in these simulations. So there's, there's five main kernels. We have SPK files, PCK, IK, CK, EK. Um, like I alluded to before, we're more interested in the S and P part of the acronym. So we're going to look at SPK files and PCK files. Um, to get the information we're looking for. Um, so you have to download these kernels separately. So you, you navigate the, the Knife website, you find their, their kernel database, and you, you have to do a lot of reading. It, it gets pretty tedious. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to navigate as well. But once you eventually find these kernels you're looking for, and I'll, I'll talk about the best way to do that, um, you just go ahead and download them and you store them in a, a kernel folder which you're going to have to make. Um, okay, so what we're going to find out is that if we have, say we want to know position elements for, for Mars, I'm going to do a Mars example here in a second, um, we're going to want to have some BSP files that have all the information that, Mars, uh, that NASA has regarding Mars. Um, we're going to want to have a time file. So we need a kernel that knows how to kind of do a conversion between March 2nd, 2017 and then what a Julian century is. Um, and then those are the two main types of kernels we're going to need. So rather than calling each one of these kernels individually, when you, when you start up MATLAB, you're going to have a, what they call a meta kernel, which is basically a text file where you kind of load the path of all the kernels you're going to want to use um, all in this file here and it's going to have this form um, so basically the only thing you're going to change essentially is are these arguments in here and you'll just have a path to the kernel you want to use um, and if you want to add descriptions to this you'll do it below this begin text line here and then you can actually you know for your own purposes you can pick and make a note of which kernel you're using and why you're using it this is a this is just a text file. Um, you can save it wherever you want. But in MATLAB, 
we're going to call this file and we're going to I'll address that as well in the example um, and stop me if you have any questions there might be a lot going on at once because this, this is a pretty confusing toolkit if you're looking at it for the first time I guess it took me a good yeah a month and a half um, it would have been quicker if it was the only thing I was looking at, yeah. but no, not to discourage you all, but it did take me about a month and a half to get a, a, a working understanding of what was happening here. Um, not that it should take a month and a half, but that's just a testament to how confusing the website is and how, how not user-friendly their documentation can be. Um, and also, just me being afraid of C. <laughs> uh, but you don't, you don't have to do anything in C if you don't want to. Um, okay, so, so say we, we figure all that other stuff out, and I'll, I'll walk you through that as I said before. We're ready to rock, we're ready to make a, a simulation in MATLAB. Um, there's a couple of preambles we're going to have to make in our code. Um, so first of all, we have to load up this, um, this lib folder and this mice folder within our, our mice subfolder, which we downloaded from the Knife website. And then we're going to have to add a path to wherever we're storing our kernels. Um, so those are the three main things. Um, so once we have that taken care of, in order to use our kernels, we have to, we have to load them first. So we have a line in there with this, this cspice furnish command, which will read your meta kernel wherever you decided to put it on your computer, so it knows which kernels to use. And when we're done, with our simulation, we're going to have to clear the what they call the kernel pool, so that if you do another simulation, you're not pulling from the same kernel, because um, you can kind of get a mismatch of data if you have different different time windows which you're simulating, um, and that'll be pretty clear here in a second when I do the example. Um, so luckily, we're only going to be playing with about four of these functions really, so we we do all that hard stuff just to get. Honestly, what we want is just uh, a good understanding of where planets are. Um, so that understanding is going to come from this function here, which, is, uh, as I say here, is going to retrieve the relative position data for whatever body you're interested in. So Mars, Jupiter, an asteroid. Um, and then we're going to use this C spice it's, uh, string to... ET, I forgot what the acronym ET stands for, but it's basically you're going to get an output in seconds, and it's going to be the number of seconds past the J2000 epic. Uh, do we all remember what that is? Can someone tell me what the J2000 epic is? Is that when we started the clock? Um, sure, kind of. They, uh, that's, that's where they standardized that clock. Exactly. So, at some pretty obscure point in time, I think BC even, some random thousands of years BC, they just started to start counting time. Um, and then they standardized that, that timer at the J2000 epoch, which is basically when the Earth's body fixed frame, the x-axis is in line with the, the vernal equinox in the year 2000 on the first day of spring. And that's when we start counting forward. That's the one we're going to change in 2025. Yes. Yes. So right now you're going to see J2000, all sorts of literature, and uh, any kind of simulation you run. But eventually J2025 is going to be something you see a lot. Like UCT25, it might say, in a lot of literature. Um, um, that's a good point. Yeah, this, this will change. This standard changes. Um, Okay, so let's let's get rolling here. Okay, so there's there's a couple of um, things to keep in mind when you're using this software here. You are interfacing with um, with this, this large database of information, and one of the reasons why you use these kernels is because you want to select which part of this database is relevant to you. Um, but in doing so, you kind of make a call externally from MATLAB into these, uh, these kernels. And kind of each time you do that, it can slow up your, your simulation. So for instance, 
if I'm integrating with OD45 and at every time step I want to know where the sun is, it has to call this function and retrieve that information and each time it, do, it does that, it can slow down your simulation. So there's, there's two ways that I kind of decided to work around this, <clears throat> or one way to work around it and one way to just deal with it. Uh, the first way is to just deal with it. Um, call it as you need it, it's accurate, it might slow down your simulation, but you have you know, the best uh, understanding of where that body is at every time step that you're interested in. Um, if you want to try to speed up your simulation a little bit, you can, you can load the entire database of position elements into your integrator. So for instance, if you make your, your differential equations file, your, um, what, what you called EOM in the homework, I believe, or maybe the, the RELAC, it's, it's another file that's floating around there. Um, you'll load this in, this giant array of position elements into there so that your your simulator can just kind of pull from there based on the time step. So basically what I do is you have the start time and the end time of your simulation. You use the cSpice command to get all the position elements that you may need. Uh, you load it into your equations of motion and you basically pull it with your integration time. So you find the integration time that index that best matches the time corresponding to your giant position array and you, you pull that information from it. So I guess the difficulty there is maybe, maybe your integration time is at 25 seconds, but you only have time for 30 seconds and 20 seconds. You're gonna have to have some kind of logic in your code that tells it either to point to 30 seconds or 20 seconds and use that information. Um, and so it, it won't be quite as accurate, but if your step size is small enough the position of these planets, you know, it's not going to be so far out from reality that it's going to ruin a, the qualitative understanding of your, simu of your simulation. But it's not going to be quite as good as running uh, these position elements for every time step like we'd want to. Um, but anyway, at the end of the day, you're going to get, you're going to be able to make a nice plot, look similar to this if you want. Um, so this is basically a simulation I ran with a satellite orbiting Mars um, using information for Mars moons Phobos and Deimos and the position of the Sun and so what you can see here is this is going to be Deimos's orbit and at the end of the simulation this is where Deimos is um, this is where my satellite ends up and this is where Phobos winds up being at the end of my simulation. And I went ahead and plotted the, the sun direction vector. So at the end here, the sun is somewhere you know, down here um, because just like, just like Earth, we're not orbiting right on like a nice even plane with the sun. We kind of oscillate. Uh, oh, I think it's about, it's almost the same 23 and a half degrees as the Earth. Um, but, you know, this, this is all information I was able to pull using the SPICE toolkit. Um, so I'll go ahead and walk you through an example in MATLAB. Let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> so, can everyone read this okay? That's a no. All right. It's maximize this. I think I'll change it back. It won't take long. Well, it shouldn't take long. I don't know why it's freezing up. Computer has stage fright. There we go.
Must be. There we go. Oh well. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to deal with it. Okay, so the first thing I did here, um, like I said in the presentation, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and load the uh, the spice toolkit. So um, I add this mice folder to the directory. I add this library folders to the directory and then I'm creating a path to where I'm storing all my kernels. Um, and I'll show you what the kernels look like as well. So they all have kind of goofy uh, Goofy names like DE4430, BSP. Um, this is a Mars kernel, Mar97 BSP. And you can't you can't really read them. <laughs> if you try to open them up, it's gonna be so those are the ones that contain position information as a function of time, for example. Yes, and this is you pull this from Yes. So, this is the website that you'll be looking at to get this toolkit installed. Um, just go to toolkit, MATLAB down here, and then you got 32 bit, you'll click this, 64 bit. Maybe you're running on a Mac, you'll use one of these links. So yes, and the kernels come from this data tab here. I'm gonna give you an idea of how how fun this website looks. So you're gonna be pulling from something like this, and if I want something with the planets, I click on planets, and then ta-da, <laughs> these are your kernels. Um, and then if you want to know which kernel to click, uh, you, you find one of these text files. Maybe I'm interested in, in 432. Let me see what that one's about. Read this. <laughs> How long are they current for? I see that this is from 14, you know? They, they recently did some updates. A lot of the, um, the support information, they have tutorials and PDFs and instructionals. They updated those this past January, so there's there's some updates regarding uh, how to use this this software. Um, but these these kernel files can be as old as you know it, they update them as necessary. So yeah, it looks like these are around 2014, 2013. Um, but these are the most up to date. So these are the ones you're gonna pull from. Um, but it it can get kind of tricky if you you want to know which which kernel to download, um, but we'll play with that on our own time. <laughs> okay, so back to the simulation. <clears throat> so you downloaded all those kernels. Oh, I'm gonna show you the kernel, the meta kernel, sorry. Let's go up here to mice. Let's 
give you an idea of what this kernel looks like that I'm loading. Genpath mice, library mice kernel. Mad at me, kernel that takes. So here's my meta kernel. I've got a number of kernels loaded up. Um, I have a Mars kernel. This is a this is the main kernel, which has information for all the planets, um, some asteroids. This is the latest time kernel, so this will have updates on how to convert um, a uh, a string, a date string to. Uh, the accurate number of leap seconds past J2000, if I want, um, and these are these are specific to some research I'm doing. But this one has to do with the moon position, uh, Earth's position, um, and this this kernel here talks about the gravitational parameters and frame information for various different reference frames. So I'm going to start the simulation at January 1st, 2015. Um, so I can go ahead and just type it in like this. And I input it to the CSPICE string to ET right here. Um, this, is, this is a variable I'm calling time final. It's basically going to tell me how long I'm running my simulation. Uh, a Martian year is 687 days. so this one is just going to add 687 days to whatever my initial time is. So if my initial time is January 1st, 2015, 687 days later, um, that's when my, my information will stop for this time, for the, the time information I pull from CSPICE. So it'll pull basically that window of time instead of pulling all the time information it has. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I put the ISS at Mars. Why not? So I'm assuming the ISS has a surface area of uh, about 0 .0035 square kilometers uh, on average, and it's got a mass of 419,000 kilograms. Um, and I'm going to simulate an orbit around Mars that's about 17,000 kilometers from the center of the planet. I wish this thing would stop turning black. Uh, the H was a time step. And I'll show you where I specify that. Sorry guys. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to initialize my simulation here. My initial radius vector, or my position vector, I'm, I'm calling R0. Um, the frame I'm using is a, a Mars-centered frame. It's a inertial frame at Mars called called Mars IAU. Um, I haven't commented out, but I, I pull it, it's inside the function I'm using. But basically I'm going to use this CSPICE position kernel here. I want to find, for this particular variable, the position of the sun at whatever many times, like a time window here, in reference to, uh, well, in this coordinate system called Mars IAU, this is a uh, aberration correction. Um, I always just leave that blank for now. That's kind of a it corrects for like relativity and uh, these times, like the time at Mars versus the time at Earth. Um, and this four is a uh, is the number for Mars. You can see like up here I have I have Earth as my reference body. I could write 
its code is 399, so I can read the right earth or 399 in here, and C-SPICE will understand that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put 4, because that's the identifier for Mars. Um, and what it's going to do is I'm using ODE113 instead of ODE45. It's a, it's a different kind of integrator. It's got a uh, predictor and a corrector as opposed to ODE45, which just integrates. Um, but I'm, I'm using this EMMARS file, which I'll pull up here. All right. Yeah, it's not smooth. Here you go. So inside my equations of motion, um, I'm doing the, the long approach. So I'm just going to, at every time step, get the accurate position of the sun and the moon at Mars. So here I'm actually calling C Spice SPK position. I'm, I want the sun information in this Mars reference frame at Mars for my integration time t. Um, and then these are the, the forces I'm going to be having in my model. So I've got acceleration, a third body acceleration from the sun, the two moons, um, the standard two body acceleration from Mars, and I, go, I have J2 in here as well. And just for fun, I threw in solar radiation pressure as well, and that's, that's what all this information is down here. Um, and we're just going to see w what the orbit of the ISS would look like around Mars at this 17,000 kilometer altitude I decided. So if I can just a second for a second. Mm -hmm. You want to say that after we finish with the impulsive maneuvers, we're going to start talking about all those additional observations that you are having. Okay, yeah, did everybody hear that? Um, eventually, so right now we're just talking about um, two-body equation when we talk about the, the force model. Um, so after we start talking about impulsive maneuvers, we're going to go into perturbations in better detail so you'll understand exactly how these extra perturbations affect the orbit. Um, we'll go into more detail about J2 specifically, and we'll talk about these things called Gaussian variation equations, which kind of give you an idea of how the orbital elements will change in time based on these perturbations. Um, but right now, just, just trust that this is working. <laughs> All right, let's run this. This, I think, is just upset with the graphics card or something. Let's see. Well, this is well. This is figuring it out. I'll go back to this website. Um. So here's. Oh, cool. That was fast. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm just going to restart it because hopefully that'll fix it. <laughs> All right. Mice test. Okay. Should the function's name that have the error be called C spice TC instead of C S P I E? Oh, yeah. I think I hit some keys when I was talking. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. That was a good catch. That was a great catch. I, I wouldn't even have looked. <laughs> okay. So this should work now. So back here. Um, if you go to documentation. Sweet. Done. Cool.
So here's basically that plot that you saw in the PowerPoint. Um, so this is kind of the result of the simulation I just ran. If you want to just look at the orbit, I have that here. Um, as you can see, we're, we're not using any thrusters on board, so this thing's just floating around in space, but uh, you can see in the Z direction, it's actually it's changing. Um, and that's, that's due to the perturbations that we're talking about. So in a perfect, the two body model, this will just be a nice, pretty line, uh, a nice ring. But because we added all that extra stuff in there, those extra forces, we get all these additional changes to the orbit. So I had the semi-major axis centered at its original position. Um, but you can see that because we have this change in the eccentricity here, we get a change of the semi-major axis. Um, so it changes, it goes about 0.1 kilometers down to negative 0.05 kilometers from its original position, kind of oscillates around. Um, and we saw in the picture of the or or in the orbit that I had displayed, you kind of saw that the out of plane motion starting to rise. And that's, that's displayed here as well. Um, and that's all a result of these forces that I helped model with the spice toolkit. Okay, that works. Where is... Now if I decided to turn those forces off, um, you'll see a perfect ring. Yeah, Mars. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off right now. And we'll compare that to the previous plot. <coughs> All right. So you can see uh, it looks like there's a change here, but if you look at the order of magnitude, it's basically just machine air. Uh, nothing's really happening. This should look about the same because of the scaling does, but what we're interested in is this plot here. What do you know? So, um, you can see the difference these perturbations have, and you can see how we're able to use that with the, the SPICE toolkit. Um, I would not be able to add these perturbations without the information about where the sun and moons are um, throughout the orbit. Um, to be able to get that more accurate plot that I have here. <clears throat> so you can see kind of uh, the utility of this, this toolkit here. If you want to actually have a more proper mission design um, to see kind of how your satellite's going to evolve, you need tools like SCK, um, tools like MATLAB, and an understanding of your dynamics model. But with CSPICE, you can actually put into practice these dynamics models because um, you need so you can get a, an idea of where these bodies are in reality. Um, what some people do just to get an idea of how these perturbations will affect the orbit, you can kind of fake a sun or fake a moon. Um, maybe you have an idea of how quickly the moon orbits around Mars. You can try to make up a body um, but it's, it's not accurate to where the moon actually is, um, and that's why you use things like Sea Spice and SDK. Um, but, yeah, I'll go ahead and pull that up right now. Uh, 
And I put together an uncollected homework for you all to look at if you want to try to play with this. And I'll post it on Canvas here after class. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and download it. Oh goodness, I'm sorry guys. I look at screens all day, so I make everything black. <laughs> um, okay, so I give you a, a clear kind of how-to on how to install the Spice Toolkit on your computer. Um, I do a good job of demystifying the whole process so you can get this up and running in probably like 10 minutes. Um, so here's instructions on how to load it up but here's really the assignment down here. Um, kind of you can use the the orbit that you made for homework one and modify it a little bit to include uh, actually you don't have to use it at all. Um, I kind of give you an instruction on how to use some of these these uh, these functions to call um, sub functions in C Spice to get position for for where the moon is on your birthday, for instance. Um, maybe you want to know where where one of Jupiter's moons is with respect to uh, one of Mars' moons. Um, you can kind of play around with these function this function right here. Um, you just put in a command. And if you look at the, uh, if you do help C Spice SPK position, it'll give you an instructional on how to, how to place your inputs. And I gave you, I gave you some links here that describe how to use these functions. Um, but yeah, if you go ahead and look at that uncollected homework, it'll, it'll give you a nice guideline on how you guys can start playing with this toolkit on your own. Uh, Yep, so that's about it. Thanks a lot.